How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be talking about the Rupp v. Becerra case that is pending before the Ninth Circuit and has actually been set for oral arguments before a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit. A lot of you guys are asking me, what's the difference between Miller v. Becerra, which deals with a challenge to California's assault weapons ban structure, and Rupp v. Becerra, which seems very similar. So we're going to talk about that in this video. But real quick, before we jump into this video, if you think that California's ban on what they deem assault weapons is completely unconstitutional and violates the Second Amendment, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a big shout out to one of the main sponsors of the channel, and that is Franklin Armory. Franklin Armory is just an amazing company. They show me and this channel a lot of support. They support us here in the state of California. They support California gun owners. So I can't thank them enough. Recently, we had movement in the Miller v. Becerra case, which is a case that's sitting before Judge Benitez in the Southern District of California, and is a challenge to California's assault weapons ban and the various statutory structures prohibiting individuals from being in possession, importing, buying, selling assault weapons as California deemed them. But there is another case that has made its way all the way to the Ninth Circuit and is now set for an oral argument with a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit, and that is the Ruff v. Becerra case. The three-judge panel is going to hear this case October 8th, 2020, and the three judges that are going to hear this case are Hurwitz, Breeze, and Bumate. Breeze and Bumate were appointed by Trump, and then Horowitz, or Hurwitz was appointed by Obama. So it's a two-to-one split. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to vote based on their party lines or who they're appointed by, but it at least looks like a two-to-one split in favor of conservative ideologies, at least. And a lot of people are asking, what is the difference between these two cases? Because when you look at Rupp v. Becerra, Rupp v. Becerra is another case that challenges California's statutory structures and penal codes which prohibit individuals from being in possession, buying, selling assault weapons here in the state of California. So like I just mentioned with Miller v. Becerra, Rupp v. Becerra deals with almost the exact same thing. So a lot of people are questioning what's the difference between these two, what's the impact of Rupp v. Becerra on Miller v. Becerra, Miller v. Becerra on Rupp v. Becerra. So a lot of people have a lot of confusion about these two cases. Rupp v. Becerra from the get-go, from the filing of the complaint, challenged California's entire statutory structure. In California, we have various categories and various laws that have developed over the years that prohibit the possession, importing, buying, selling of what California deems assault weapons. The Assault Weapons Control Act started as a ban on a list of, of specific models and makes of rifles. So there's a list of actual make and models that California deems assault weapons. From there, essentially California expanded this to the point to where now, we have an entire structure that says any semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has specific features on it is deemed to be an assault weapon if it has a detachable magazine. And then they say that if a rifle does have fixed magazine or does not have a detachable magazine, it cannot have any magazines in it that hold more than 10 rounds. Also, California has a structure dealing with air pistols and shotguns. So they've pretty much expanded from that original list all the way to what we have now. And Rupp v. Becerra challenges that entire structure, and it challenged it from the get-go. In contrast, Miller v. Becerra started as a very limited scope. Miller v. Becerra came out after the Duncan v. Becerra case. Many of you are familiar with Duncan v. Becerra, and that is another case that's pending in the Ninth Circuit and is waiting for an en banc panel review. Duncan v. Becerra was ruled by the same judge, Judge Benitez, which Miller v. Becerra is pending before. In Duncan v. Becerra, essentially Judge Benitez said that California's magazine ban structure and limiting magazines that have more than 10 rounds as being large capacity magazines was illegal, violated the Constitution, and pretty much he struck down that law through a preliminary injunction and it got appealed up to the Ninth Circuit. Out of that specific ruling, Miller v. Becerra came. And Miller v. Becerra started originally as a challenge to California's statutory structure dealing with fixed magazine ARs that have the capacity to hold more than 10 rounds. Essentially what happened is the plaintiffs in Miller v. Becerra said that Judge Benitez, you already ruled in Duncan v. Becerra that we are allowed to have specific magazines and you even issued a stay saying that we could purchase these magazines and that we are in lawful position of these magazines that became known as California's Freedom Week. So in Miller v. Becerra, they essentially said, since you said we can have those magazines, we should also be able to use them in specific firearms, rifles, and specific configurations. But California law says that we can't do that. And if we do that, we are in possession of what California sees as an assault weapon. So as you can see, Miller v. Becerra started as a much more narrow issue. And it had to do with kind of a leaping off from Judge Benitez's ruling in Duncan v. Becerra. Now, since then, Miller v. Becerra has very much expanded and now is pretty much a comprehensive challenge to California's statutory structure 
and pretty much deals with almost identically what Rup v. Becerra deals with. But it started off as a much more limited issue. And this answers a lot of you guys' questions as well about, well, how did Miller v. Becerra and Duncan v. Becerra end up both before Judge Benitez? Miller v. Becerra essentially was transferred over to Judge Benitez because he was the specific individual that ruled on magazine capacity in Duncan v. Becerra. And since Miller v. Becerra was kind of a leaping off from that, it got transferred to him to kind of clarify and further expand on his ruling. Now, as far as the which case has more significance and will have more significance on us in California sooner, essentially, than later, understand that Rupp v. Becerra has made it to the Ninth Circuit, but it has made it to the Ninth Circuit because when it was heard at the lower level, at the trial court level, in the district courts in California, our side lost. Essentially, a motion for summary judgment was granted in favor of the state of California, which means that the case was dismissed by the lower court. Our side went ahead and appealed that granting of the motion for summary judgment, saying that essentially the court down below analyzed the issue incorrectly. And now it is pending and is waiting to be heard by a three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit. If the three-judge panel rules in our favor in Rupp v. Becerra, all that really does is say that the lower court essentially incorrectly ruled down below on the motion for summary judgment. And if uh, the state of California, which I doubt they will do this, but if they did not, seek an en banc review, or if it didn't make its way up to the Supreme Court, all that would do is it would kick it back down to the trial court, and then the trial court would have to reanalyze and determine whether or not they should grant that motion to summary judgment, or if they incorrectly granted the motion for summary judgment. So all it really does is kick it back down to the trial court to determine, based on what the three-judge panel said, whether what they did was incorrect or correct. Very much different in Miller v. Becerra, the thing we are waiting for as of October 18th, 2020, an evidentiary hearing has been set. And this is specifically on a motion for preliminary injunction. And it is a motion for preliminary injunction on the entire statutory structure prohibiting individuals from being in possession of what California deems assault weapons. And if Judge Benitez grants that motion for preliminary injunction, that automatically prevents the state of California from enforcing those uh, various statutory structures. So as far as which one will have the most immediate impact, it will be Miller v. Becerra, not Rupp v. Becerra. But as far as major distinctions between one or another, just think of it as Miller v. Becerra started as much more narrowly, but hasn't expanded, whereas Rupp v. Becerra started very broad and has stayed that way all the way through. Miller v. Becerra, the hearing that we have set specifically is challenging and is looking for a stay on California's statutory language almost immediately, Whereas Rupp v. Becerra is pending before the Ninth Circuit and is waiting for a three-judge panel oral arguments, but since the district court down below in that case issued a summary judgment, even a favorable ruling there, we would have to seek some sort of additional stay of the language after that ruling. So it's just not something that will automatically happen. So that is why I put a lot more emphasis on Miller v. Becerra, because in my opinion, I think we will get much more impact sooner on Miller v. Becerra than we would out of Rupp v. Becerra. And also, it's much more likely that we'll get a favorable ruling because it's before Judge Benitez and he has the track record of ruling in our favor. And even though the Ninth Circuit in Rupp v. Becerra, we have a two to one split in favor of conservatives, there is no guarantee that they will rule in our favor. And I just feel much more comfortable that Judge Benitez or St. Benitez as he's become known as, I'm much more safe with saying that he will likely give us a favorable ruling. If you have any questions about all this stuff, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I usually monitor them for about an hour and try to answer questions to the best of my ability. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is join the Patreon page. And I'll go ahead and put a link down below to the Patreon page. Also, just like, commenting, subscribing, and make sure you hit that notification bell because that helps channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, also helps spread news about what's going on here in the state of California in regards to these major Second Amendment cases. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.